At the end of the previous video, I suggested that you try drawing some more regular shapes using the Python turtle. Here's the code you need to draw a regular octagon. A regular octagon has eight sides of equal length. I did some research online and found that I have to turn my turtle through an angle of 45 degrees after drawing each line. By the way, I can change the speed of the turtle like this. You can experiment with different values in the brackets and see what effect it has on the speed. Something else you might like to do is change the shape which you're drawing with. That's more like a turtle. What I really want to talk about in this video is how we can improve the code that draws my octagon. You'll have noticed that I'm repeating the same two commands over and over again. Eight times, in fact. So let's apply one of the concepts you've already met. The concept of iteration, or looping. I'm going to repeat two commands eight times using a while loop, like this. Watch what this does. In fact, if you think about it, I'm drawing one more line than I need to. While i is less than 8, we'll do the job. i starts off with a value of 0, which means it's less than 8. So these two commands are executed we draw a line and we turn through an angle of 45. Then we add 1 to i, so i is now 1. We go back to the top of the loop and the two commands are repeated again. We add 1 to i again, so i is now 2. We go back to the top of the loop and we repeat the two lines again. And this continues until such time as i is equal to 7, which means we will have executed these two lines eight times. It has to do with the fact that i starts with a value of 0. If it makes more sense, you can initialize i with a value of 1 and say while i is less than or equal to 8, like we had before. What matters is that the commands inside the loop are executed 8 times. Oh, and by the way, rather than saying i equals i plus 1, there's a shorthand way of writing this. I can say i plus equals 1. In other words, add 1 to i. Or to use the technical term, increment i. So what about a dodecagon? A dodecagon has 12 sides. Having done a little bit of research online, I know that the angle I need to turn through is 30 degrees. All of the internal angles of a regular dodecagon are 150 degrees, and because the angles on a straight line have to add up to 180, I need to turn through an angle of 30. And of course, it's a dodecagon, so these commands need to happen 12 times. A regular dodecagon. What about an icosagon? An icosagon has got 20 sides. And with an internal angle of 162, I need to turn through 18 degrees. Well, it is a 20-sided figure, but unfortunately I can't see some of it. What I really need to do is start drawing lower down in the window, and I can do that, like this.
Let's take a look. Well, it sort of worked. My original starting position is here. If we call this x equals 0 and y equals 0, what I've done is I've moved minus 300 places in the y direction, but I haven't moved at all in the x direction. Unfortunately, my turtle drew a line while it moved. I can fix that like this. Think of the turtle as a pen. What I'm doing here is lifting up the pen so it's not touching the canvas anymore. Then I move the position of the turtle and then I put the pen down again so I can start drawing. And there is my regular 20-sided icosagon. Now I've included a few extra lines of code here, just to get in the right starting position, but as you can see, with a loop, I've saved myself a lot of code. I've got five lines here instead of 40. Why don't you try drawing some of these regular shapes yourself, using iteration with a while loop, rather than just a sequence of commands? Start with a hexagon, and then maybe an octagon, then a nonagon, a decagon, a dodecagon, and perhaps an icosagon. Now here's another challenge for you. Why not write a program that asks the user what type of shape they want to draw, like this. The user types the name of the shape, and then they're asked how big they want each side to be. And the program draws the shape. They're then asked if they want to draw another shape. If the answer is yes, they say what shape and how big each side should be. And the program draws the shape. If the program doesn't know what the shape is, an appropriate message is displayed and the user is invited to try again. If the user says no, the program comes to an end. To make this work, you're going to need one more command which I haven't told you about, and it's this one. Turtle.clear. It just clears the shape that it drew last. If you want to give it a go, stop the video now and pick up from where you left off later, and I'll show you how I did it. So here's my solution to the problem. Notice that I'm asking the user to input the name of the shape and how big each side should be. When the user types in the size of the side, I convert that into an integer. This is where I'm using turtle.clear, which will clear any shapes that are in the window already. And then I have an if block with lots of elifs. If the shape is a triangle, I'm setting a variable to be equal to 0, which is my loop counter. While i is less than 3, because a triangle has three sides, I draw the shape. And notice how my forward command doesn't have a number in the brackets, it's got the contents of the variable size of side. If the shape is a square, I do something very similar, except my loop counts four times. And of course the angle is different. And there's the code for the pentagon, and there's the hexagon, and I have an else clause which says I don't know what that shape is. Outside of the if block, I'm asking the user if they want to draw another shape. But notice that all of this code is inside a while loop. I'm setting a variable called again to be equal to yes. And then while again is equal to yes, the loop continues. This is where the user might type no, and then the contents of this variable will become no, which means the loop can stop. 